Tell where you got the shoot. My body, tell where. Okay, yeah. If you want, I can zoom a little more. Let me show you. you. Zoom in it. You got it, this part of it all? Yeah, up, up to here. Good. <clears throat> okay, and. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi alladheen astafa amma ba'd. We have been discussing the topic of social media. In our previous discussion, we shed some light with regards to the importance of intention and the role intention plays in our use of the social media platform. We made mention of an important and significant principle to keep in mind that in the use of social media, we need to check our intentions before the use. We need to check our intention during the use of this medium in communicating and also after. What are the ways that intention plays a role in our social media usage? This, uh, this is an important question that we need to ask. What's your intention in using it? What important lesson about intention do people need to know? Firstly, I would like to draw our attention to intention in social media. And that is, social media is by intention. It all starts here. And what are the ways that intention plays a role in the social media usage? Is what important lesson about intention do people need to know when posting a photo? Ask yourself, what are you trying to get across? This doesn't mean that everything has to have some unique value to make the world a better place. Maybe you are posting a picture, just pure entertainment. And that's okay. And there is room for that in this deen of ours. But many a times the purposes of posting a picture is something else. There is underlying messages. Food can also be a way of connecting with family. Sharing photos from family dinners, parties, or something specific from a particular family member. But today, food photos can also be self-serving. It's sometimes a sign of ingratitude. Or for those who constantly post everything they eat, a sign of some serious issues. For some, it can be a means of hoarding attention, craving likes and shares at all costs. So before you post the next food photo, before you post the next food photo online, slow down and ask. Ask why and be comfortable with your answer. And go from there. Just have limits. For example, like standing on a chair at a restaurant to get a better shot. In that case, you are better off not documenting it and just enjoy the meal instead. So just as we teach our children the various other aspects of Deen and some very simple issues, we also need to learn and teach ourselves how do we navigate social media and proper etiquette of its usage. Today, the virtual world has become an extension to our lives. And if we don't take a hands-on approach, we may not recognize our kids. Now, due to the super abundant use of this medium, it is an integral part of our Sharia that we learn the laws pertaining to the use of this platform. And we've mentioned some of this in the, our past discussion. What is right? What is wrong? What is permissible? What is impermissible? And I don't want to put a heavy 
something heavy on you, but in my humble opinion, it is far than mandatory to learn and know about how we use it. Let's go ahead and talk about what are some of the key issues at hand. I'd like to take the discussion on a broader, more general sense. I'd like to address the fundamental values of communication. And the key things to avoid when engaging in these types of communications online. Regardless of whether you're having a communication with family members, personal friends of the same gender. And also, eventually we will talk about use of social media with regards to intergender relationships. But first, I'd like to talk about the basic principles and values that need to be in place. The relevance of our Sharia, the relevance of our Quran, the relevance of our Hadith. And if we look into these Ahadith and the Ayats of the Quran Kareem, and understand them in the environment that we are living in. Subhanallah. We only can be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we see the relevance of our Sharia. But the important thing is to understand that relevance. Let's take a hadith and express and explain and discuss and explore the relevance of this hadith in the relationship to social media. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in a hadith An Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam iyyakum wal julusa bit turqat qalu ya Rasulullah ma lana budda min majalisina natahaddathu fiha qala fa amma idha abaytum fa'tu at-tariq haqqahu qalu wa ma haqqahu قال غض البصر وكف الأذى ورد السلام والأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر. This is a hadith narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih al-Muslim. Abu Sa'id Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه narrated that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم once said to them, avoid sitting by the roadside. And the people then said, Oh Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we cannot do without these meeting places in which we converse. We cannot do without these meeting places where we engage in the social interaction. And he said the words, La Buddha Lana, this is necessary, the social interaction is necessary for us. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Well, if you insist, and if you insist on that, then at least give the road its due rights. And they asked, what are the roads due? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, lowering your gaze, abstaining from anything offensive, returning salutations, and joining the right ma'roof and forbidding the evil. Do not sit around in the streets and just talk, said Rasulullah. The Sahaba said, La Buddha Lana. We need some place and time for social interaction. If you really need to congregate, Rasulullah then gave them some guidelines. Do not sit in the way, do not block the path. Today, if you tell someone that you need to stay away from the social interaction and you would get the same response. Today, in those days, rather, the platform and the forum where people used to engage with each other was the roadsides. Today, it no more is such. Today, the platform where we interact with people is the social media. The very rules that apply to the roadside that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in this hadith equally applies to the use of the social media platform. And when the Sahaba said, La Buddha Lana, we need some place and time for social interaction, our kids and we ourselves will then say and respond when you are asked not to use this medium, we will also have the same response. We need some place for social interaction and this is the medium. 
So Rasulullah said, if you really need to congregate, Rasulullah then gave them some guidelines. Do not sit in the way. Do not block the pathway. Lower your gaze. Lowering your gaze. Abstaining from anything offensive. Returning salutations. Enjoying the right and forbidding the evil. These were some of the guidelines that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, gave. He gave some etiquette. The same would apply to the present day of communication on the social media. This is a remarkable opportunity to show the transcendent nature of Islam, of what we believe in, the guidance and the strength and the versatility of our religion, that it addresses anything and everything. It proves, dare I say, it proves to a Muslim that Islam can teach you how to live in any aspect or any part of your life. Reflect on this hadith. Do not sit around in the street and just talk. And the Sahaba said, we need some social interaction. And Rasulullah then gave them some. Now, if you look at this hadith, let's look at the first one. Lower your gaze. Lowering your gaze. How important is this instruction with regards to social media? This hadith lays out a number of important rules, all of which are directly applicable to social networking. Lowering the gaze is particularly important advice. This governs not just having a high level of modesty and decorum when interacting with the opposite gender, but it's a good reminder about guarding yourself from the traps such as the internet pornography. How much promiscuity and immorality is being spread by the means of social media? And this advice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lowering the gaze, it's so appropriate in the use of social media, in the need for social interaction. At least if you need to do, use the social media. Observe and watch what you watch. Stay tuned, inshallah, when we get back, we will continue with this discussion. Okay. You see, Malana, before social media, it was still available. Now, social media made it such that they're doing on their own things, mm -hmm. which is, in India is very bad, very bad, because Indians were like conservative in a sense, but now it's free for them. Immediately after Zohar. Okay. And... Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We were discussing the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhu about some etiquettes of the roadside and we are applying the same hadith and the same guidance of that hadith on the road that we use to keep in touch which is a social media and the first advice that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave in that hadith is Raddul Basar lower your gaze. This governs not just having a high level of modesty and decorum when interacting with the opposite gender, but it's a good reminder about guarding yourself from traps such as the internet and internet pornography. You are alone in your bedroom and you have the screen before you and you are able to go and search and scan many sites and it is this medium that is allowing you to do that so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if you really need to use this medium for social interaction the first principle that you need to keep in mind Ghaddul Basar, watch what you watch 
It's a good reminder about guarding yourself from the traps of internet pornography. Have good etiquette when interacting with others. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the second advice. Kaful other. Avoid causing harm. Have good etiquette when interacting with others. This starts with giving each other proper greetings. And it encompasses advocating righteousness and standing against evil in all forms. And therefore we find that this hadith mentions, firstly, Ghabdul Basar, watch what you watch. Kaful other, avoid causing harm. How many times do we cause harm to people by using the social media platform, by putting profiles and statuses and photos about issues and things? Again, goes back to the issue of intention that we spoke previously. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you have to use that platform, then give its rights. And one of the rights is Afshu salam. Now, when we talk of salam, it's not just the verbal pronouncement of salam that Islam advocates. It's not just to say assalamu alaikum. But there is a deep rooted meaning in the message and in the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. The rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you. May Allah's barakah and blessings be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How do we internalize that in our actions with people? That's important. Not just the pronouncement of the salam. It's not just to say assalamu alaikum, but to internalize that salam and make it manifest in the way we interact with people. So during the social media platform and keeping in touch with people, promote peace. Promote giving du'as to people. Instead of talking about others, instead of using it as a means of gossip and abuse and calling names. And that's another topic that we'll get to inshallah as we go along. So, deal with each other. It starts with giving each other proper greetings encompasses advocating righteousness and standing against evil in all forms. So when we take a look at how social media is primarily used, we have some major issues. And some of the major points relating to Facebook, the first among them is that social media has allowed people to start living an existence that is not their own true existence or identity. Let me just repeat what I'm saying. Social media has allowed people to start living an existence, to start living a life. It is not their own true existence or identity. To put it in simple terms, people are being more fake online today than when they have been in the past. Before, people are being more fake online today than they have ever been in the past. What I mean by this is, observe if any of these ring a bell. I'm going to make mention of some things and just observe if it brings a bell. We will never say things that we say online that we will say in real life. In real life, we will not say things what we put on the platform of social media. People will post pictures that they will never ever show in real life. People will try to show an image of themselves that they are not really in real life. For example, posting a picture of yourself or something that is not yours or that you don't have. Social media gives you the avenue of being a poser, of being fake, or acting like someone that you are not, or to have multiple profiles. And that's something that's always been a problem and that's something that's always been addressed by psychologists and educators, by spiritual leaders of different faith-based communities. But the reason why it's a critical issue online 
Why it's so critical through social media is because the online realm allows you to manifest a fake identity of yourself unlike anything ever before. In the past, if you recall, when we were kids, we used to make prank calls. But the prankness and making those prank calls is something now that is not even thought of. And the way it is being used and this fake profiles and identities that the social media offers us the opportunity to do. Because other forms of communication, first of all, it was person to person. Later on, we had vocal communication. But this is a completely distant, artificial form of communication through text messages, through words, through pictures, through links, and mostly comments and statuses and the likes. So this is such a distant and artificial form of communication that you can completely create and put a complete fake identity of yourself. You can be acting like the complete opposite person of what you really are. And I know this may sound somehow trivial because what if I'm acting as if I'm playing in my high school football team when in reality I don't mean what's the big deal about it? And I'll get to that in our future discussions, inshallah. But I want you to grasp the very ugly side of it. This fake identity of yours that you wish to show has far-reaching ramifications regarding your spirituality, regarding your psychological well-being. It affects your relationship with yourself. It affects your relationship with your family. It affects your relationships with your friends as well as your relationships with Allah. It affects your relationship with Allah and that is so crucial because in that fake identity there is spiritual and psychological degradation. Because you lie about yourself and then you begin to believe who you are. The first victim of this is your self-esteem. Your self-esteem get damaged. You begin to have a low self-esteem. You're not happy and satisfied with who you are, what you have. And because your fake personality gets all the validation, so we are who we are as we are. And there is no need for us to be ashamed. Each one of you is special in your own way. No need to show yourself as someone else. Where somebody could be communicating with thousands of people at a very intimate private level. This is another form of a fake identity. Where somebody could be communicating with thousands of people at a very intimate level. Pretending to be a 16 year old girl when in actually he is a 60 year old man. I want you to grasp the danger of the issue. The hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about. And I will conclude our discussion today with this hadith. And continue with this fake identity and multiple profiles in our next discussion insha'Allah. Just reflect on this hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مِن شَرِّ النَّاسِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَ بُلْوَجْحِينَ The worst of people on the day of Qiyamah in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Dulwajhain. A person with two faces. He goes to a particular group of people with a different face. He's at home with his family and kids in a different face. And he goes outside in public with a different face. Your multiple profiles allows you to have two, three, four, five, ten, twelve faces. And in the sight of Allah, you are termed as the worst of people. And this is not only restricted to two-faced as far as your belief is concerned, it is also two-faced as far as your actions are concerned. So this hadith even addresses the multiple profiles that we put up on the social media platform. You might have understood and you might have realized 
the, the depth in which we are going to go into this discussion. It brings us to the end of today's discussion. Insha'Allah, in our future discussion, we will elaborate and expand on multiple profiles and then go on to the various other aspects of this very significant topic, the use of social media in the life of a Muslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay,